Welcome back to Bourbon Country Reacts. Hey, everybody. I'm Keith. Hey, Keith. Kind of the music guy, and I am a happy boy. <laughs> oh, I don't even know what to say to that. I'm Dustin. I'm the bourbon guy. Why are you so happy? Seems give, weird. Give your introductory about the bottle that Holly but sent you us. Freaking freaked me out. I don't know. This isn't Holly. This is Donna. Oh, Donna. Okay. God, get it right. I'm sorry, Donna. He's sorry, Donna. You know what? As soon as I turned around and looked, I was like, that's wrong. That's that's Donna. Because uh, there's the bottle that Holly sent. There's a story about ha that. Has some interesting art on the label. Yeah, we'll do that one next. <laughs> but uh, we don't know how it'll drop, but we're going to record it next. Uh, so this is from Donna. She sent us a bribe. MB Roland, uncut and unfiltered. I don't see any wood. What? Oh, floating around in there? Yeah. Don't I think just because it's unfiltered doesn't mean there has to be crap floating around in the bottom. They're lying. <laughs> they're lying. Well, if it came from the top of the barrel, it wouldn't have any, huh? When they, when they pull at Starlight Distillery, when they pulled those and put it in our Listen, glasses, there was... We don't have to get all scientific on this channel. It says it's unfiltered and there are Solid no... Solid shit There's no floaties. I'm saying. I think floaties is a scientific term. I know. <laughs> all right. So, this is still in bear... Still... Ooh. Yep. What? Nothing. We get into that when we get into the bourbon. What is it? Nothing. You'll see. No. What's the brand? Oh, it's a MB Roland. MB Roland. All right. I've never heard of it. I, I haven't either. Ooh. Piece of candy. So, um, <laughs> like this little farm. <laughs> it's a little farm on the cap. It's got two silos, a barn, and some fields. Okay. So why are you a happy boy? So, we've done some Marty Stewart songs. Who, who says happy boy? Me. Because I'm a happy boy. Yeah, I guess so. We've done Donna, two. Donna has made me a happy boy. We've done exactly two Marty Stewart songs. We one have. we should have been high for. Yep. The other one... Yeah, the, the uh, Crow song really didn't have the full effect without some mushrooms. Um, the other one I liked a lot better. Yep. Yeah, I can't remember the title off the top of my head right now, but I did like it a lot better. So, the reason Keith is a happy boy. This is Marty Stewart and his fabulous superlatives. What the hell is that? I'm assuming it's his band. His fabulous superlatives? But, that's <laughs> in my mind, that's not the important part. But that's funny. With Tommy Emmanuel. Is that? You're the music guy. So this blasphemer over here, this apostate, doesn't Ooh. know who Tommy Emmanuel is. I think is. I've heard of him, but... So Tommy Emmanuel is absolutely one of the best, if not the best, acoustic guitar players on planet Earth. No. -uh. Better than Chet Atkins? Oh, yeah. What? Oh, oh. On acoustic, there are only a couple of people on the planet that are Billy at this Strings. guy's look. Not even close. What? I'm telling you, Tommy Emmanuel is the Steve Vai of acoustic. Well, let's hear it. I cannot wait to hear it, and I really he's hope like, he's Tommy shaking shows shaking over off. here. He's like, oh. Uh, man, Tommy Emmanuel is just a virtual. I have a feeling Donna was pretty specific about this video. So maybe we get to see some... I think she knows Keith. Do we get sound with this video? Say hello to Mr. Tommy Emanuel. All right, Tommy. Hello, Tommy. <laughs> Tommy, the song me and Mr. Kennerly composed comes from the Mississippi Delta land. It goes like this. You know what to do. Down to town. I'm a dreamland river with a 
Whoever that guy is, he's no joke. The guy in the base. He's not a slouch. He's good too. Yeah, he is. They were just having fun. Donna, you know what you just did? Oh, you just, she just made my freaking night. She made my playlist. She made my week. This is this is a song that, like, first of all, Keats is, is going, where has this been all my life? Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm in your brain. And this will make his evening rotation. Uh, without a freaking doubt. <laughs> so, first off, that other guitar player that was on stage was no slouch. Mm -mm. And I'm telling you, for the rest of his life, he's going, man, I played with Tommy Emmanuel. <laughs> right. And Marty Stewart. Well, that's the part that I wasn't really prepared for. <laughs> what? Because... Where was that in the first two songs? Because Tommy was a known quantity to me. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I know what a beast he is. Uh -huh. he's, he's on a different level than everybody else. And uh, if you ever doubt it, go watch uh, his rendition of Classical Gas on guitar. It's just amazing. Like, it sucks you in, and the skill is on display. But I was unprepared to hear some, M Marty Stewart play a mandolin like Engve freaking Malmsteen, man. Oh, Swedish no. death metal. Like, I, I was not ready for that. <laughs> well, and I was a little upset at first when the video first started because you could tell very quickly 
that Marty's instrument was turned up with the mics. They actually had a, a, a Tommy mixed a little low. Correct. He still smoked it. He did. <laughs> but I was like, we're not going to hear Tommy very much because Marty's hogging the sound. And then he did that. And I was like, I, that's cool. I ain't even mad. I ain't mad. <laughs> <laughs> nah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Damn, dude. I think. Wow. That was, you... a, that was a display. If you take out some Paganini concertos that I've seen. Okay. So, classical, the original God of Speed. Uh If you take that out, I think that might be the single best strings performance I've ever seen. Ever. Because even that bass player was flying around Dude, back there. What? And normally and, and in that, that genre of music, the bass player's got the most boring dum, job on dum, on our... Dum. Bump, bump. Uh-huh. But, <laughs> nah. nah, he was moving And he up. was having a blast. Well, he's on stage with Tommy Emanuel. And Marty Stewart. Rest, rest and some life. other dude that can play. <laughs> yeah. And then this weirdo with a fucking the snare, snare drum. drum with a like, brush on what it. What the that. hell was that about? That was weird. Oh, this one gets listened to for analysis. This one gets listened to for enjoyment. This gets listened to go, going down the road, driving way too damn fast. <laughs> well, well, if you weren't going fast, you would be. Because this will make your pedal go... Whoo. I need to not listen to this in the supercar. Right. That'd be real... Because... <laughs> like, oh, my foot got heavy. I don't know what happened. Well, officer, I was doing 170 because I was listening to some Marty Stewart. Check this shit out. Listen, it's amazing. Uh, Yeah, so... But this is... So I'm going to set the scene, okay? Keith has had one finger of bourbon so far. Not right now. I'm talking about later. He's had one finger of bourbon. He's like, you know what? I'm going to get me another finger of bourbon. And he pours himself a a finger of tequila because he's fucking weird. And he's sitting here and he's like, I'm going to go listen to that song. And then he's just, hmm. Uh, this happens. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. It's actually going to happen That's later. It's going to happen, I'm saying. <laughs> I already know. It's going, yeah. I mean, I've, I've had basically nothing to drink, but I'm going to, I actually am going to pour some tequila because I got a really expensive bottle of mezcal today. I, I have a crystal ball. <laughs> right here. Crystal ball. Uh, so... Yeah, amazing freaking tune. Uh, just that—that uh, that was incredible. You killed it, Donna. Yeah, you killed that one. That was awesome. You said not a lot of nose on this. It's not of any kind. This is really cool because they tell you a lot about what's in the bourbon. So I've got the mash bill. I've got the char. I've got the. Um, what the fuck? I've got the bottle number. I have to ask, since you've got the mash bill. I've got an actual signature. Like, that's not printed. That's real. Is this a weeded? Uh, no. (laughs) No. Okay. Because I just got hit with the strangest thing. Hold on. I just found the age statement. Yeah. Aged at least two years. With that kind of color? What are you talking about? That's like a that's like a six year color. There ain't no way that's only two years. Grandy glass. I love it when people put that shit on there. I don't understand. Why is there it is again. There's a scholar seal on here. I've never seen that before. I've got to talk about this flavor. Okay, talk about it. So, this is another oak forward. So, when you sip it, you get oak and some sort of citrus. Like a grapefruit. Yeah, it's it's almost a bitter sour. Yes. Uh, but oak is bitter, so... Yeah, so the oak and the citrus uh, citrus are kind of combining to give you that 
almost grapefruit. Yeah. Um, the mid. So the mid and finish blend directly together, and there is the most oddball flavor there. Yep. And I have perfectly named it. Or name, uh, I can perfectly name it. What? Homemade whole wheat bread. It is whole wheat bread. You know that brown bread? Pumpernickel. Not pumpernickel. Just the whole wheat bread. I don't know if I've ever had that, but I think it's... So, 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 so... The problem I have with that name is whole wheat bread, you would think, would be kind of bland. It's not. It's not bland at all. No. But no, I mean whole wheat bread is not bland. Oh, really? Yeah, it's pretty flavorful. Are you thinking like a rye bread? Nope. I don't, I don't know. Whole wheat. I've never had it. I don't know what he's talking about. It, it's it's it, inside the loaf. It's actually kind of brown and or tan, uh, grayish brown, kind of like a pumpernickel. Okay. But um, the flavor of it is the mid and finish of that to a T. It's wild. I've never had anything even close to it. No whiskey of any kind have I had give me that flavor. So it's 78% white corn. Which is unique in itself. Mm-hmm. Typically, white corn's sweeter. Well, typically they use sweet corn in the mashes. Sweet corn mashes are expensive because mm-hmm. sweet corn is more expensive. Seventeen percent rye. Okay. Which is a Woodford level. Which weirdly, I'm not really tasting. I get the rye. Do the you? rye is punching me in the mouth. Not me. That's why I said rye bread. Uh, and five percent malted barley. Actually, 5% malt. It doesn't say barley. I would assume it means barley, because usually that's what that means. This is a char number four. High char, very high char. That explains your color. Right. Um, what proof do you think it's at? Your bread, bread man. I'm going to go at 95. His proofer is off. Is it just completely it's, broken? It's broke, dude. You're broke. You're broke. You're broke. Sad. Not approved no more. <laughs> what is it? It's barrel proof. At 108. Then it's smooth as hell for 108. 108 proof. I, I, what's this called? This is this is a very unique whiskey. I made bubbles. I, I've well, have you seen the moonshiners? When they when they come off the worm, they'll tap it and watch those bubbles. It tells them up. It it has. They can tell you the proof by the way it bubbles. Really? In a mason jar. Yeah. Hmm. That's kind of cool. I like it. There's a scholar seal. I ain't never seen that. You mean like a navy guy with a PhD? I don't know what that means. A scholar and a seal. I get the seal part. I don't get the color part. I guess he has a doctorate. Yeah, in seal. (laughs) (laughs) Could be in anything. Could be. This is in Kentucky. We should go. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm intrigued. Yeah, this is pretty cool. They were established in '09, by the way. So this this is this is a very strange flavor. And I don't. A lot of times when I get a strange flavor, I think bad. It turns out to be a bad flavor. This is not the case with this. It's strange, unique, like Keith. And I think it's growing on me the more I drink it. Yeah, the first time you drink it, you're like, "What the hell was that?" You literally, you're like, "What the hell was that?" And then you drink it again, you're like, "I might like that." So this is one you pull off the shelf when you want to confuse your buddies. Change up. A change up. Try this. Tell me what you think. And then solicit opinions from people. Yeah. Because this, this is just different. You don't get the rye? Not a bit. Take man. a little bit of a bigger sip. Oh, you don't have to take a huge one. It's barrel proof after all. I kind of get like that. So I'm Oh, think, there it is. I'm thinking about that, uh, the bread analogy. I get like... The bread crust. So whole wheat bread tastes like the bread crust all the way through the loaf. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. I do get that. Yeah. Um, 
the big drink, the rye came out. Yeah. The pepper kind of coming up in the finish it's is deep. significant. Mm-hmm. But what I'm not getting, you know how in the mid, uh, rye tend to have, or high rye bourbons. Vanilla. Even, tend to have that very vanilla mid. I'm it not getting have that. that. It doesn't no. have that. No. It's got that citrus up front, and then it goes to bread. Citrus and oak up front. Yeah. True. It goes to that. Yeah, that's, it's neat. I, I just, I think it's neat. It goes to bread, and then it goes to rye. Yep. If you take a bigger drink, you get the rye pepper. Tiny sipping it like I was, you don't really get that rye at all. Yeah. Yeah. So. Thanks, Donna. Incredible song. Really interesting bottle. I can't wait to hear that again later. Yeah. We will. Yeah, we'll be we'll be checking that out. I'll have some tequila. So, guys, if you enjoyed this uh, video, go ahead and give us a like. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Drop down in the comments. Tell us what country music we need to check out, what North American whiskeys we need to try. We'll see you next time. See you.